Hello, hello, and welcome to Spindle TV. How are y'all doing tonight? <clears throat> Good to see you for 2024. Happy New Year to you all. This is going to be our first class back in the new year. Uh, the uh, I didn't take I didn't take any time off or anything like that, but I did not have any classes up until now, as you know. Um, and um, when we left off, we left off with uh, our patriotic box that we were making. We were making a decorative box that had, you know, all kinds of American flags and eagles and other things in there. And uh, we're going to continue that project uh, this evening uh, to see what we can get done with it and um, see what lessons we can learn from it all. Um, hopefully you're doing well. I'm so glad to be back. Um, I want to tell you a really quickly exciting, a real quick, exciting little story. Um, that uh, before we get started, so last week I had to drive up uh, to Indiana, to Martinsville, Indiana, the home office of Digital Woodcarver, and um, it was uh, the twelfth through the fourteenth. I was up there, <laughs> and. Um, the uh, event while I was there went well. Uh, we we're working on some new products to release and launch for 2024. And uh, had a coworker with me that works with me down here from time to time. Took him up with me up north, uh, and um, we did our thing in Martinsville, Indiana. Time to come home to Florida, uh, but we ended up driving home in the middle of a massive crazy winter storm and uh my little car i have a little lexus uh is uh 250 convertible car uh it had florida tires on it very low profile sporty little tires that make the car look cool well that's not practical up north you know down in florida and everything it's probably fine you know the tires grip the wall the roads very well and and you know it corners very well well in the Tennessee mountains uh, in you know negative nine degree you know uh, temperatures and, uh, and and snow and ice uh, on mountain roads untreated and everything it's not ideal not to have the proper equipment on your vehicle so right away as we're getting into these steep grades in the Tennessee mountains and everything, my car decides I'm going to let go of the road. It just doesn't hold on anymore. And I have no control. I'm, I'm all over three lanes of traffic, semi trucks and all kinds of things around me completely turn around 360 degree. I don't know how many times I turned around, but uh, when it was all said and done and the car finally decided to stop turning so I could just, just go into a slide. I'm facing the traffic, right? I'm facing all the semi-trucks and everything. And then the car decides to just, you know, turn sideways and just continue down the mountain at a sideways turn. No control. I have absolutely no control, no traction. I've gone off the road. I've hit the medium in the middle. There's a brick wall, a medium in the middle. Uh, luckily, no damage to the vehicle and everything. But these semi-trucks and everything, they, 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 they know. They saw the Florida tag. They thought, yeah, this guy's a freaking idiot, right? You know, but I'm, I'm, I've got my hand out the window. I'm, I'm Jesus, take the wheel, kind of thing, you know. <laughs> and uh, these trucks that have some of them didn't have traction either, thank God. Uh, so they were semi trucks were getting stuck as well too. So it wasn't just me, but the ones that did have traction, they were passing right by me while my car was sliding uncontrollably. I can't stop it. These cars decided, oh, I'm just going to go around this dude, right? I almost got clipped by so many semi trucks. I, I I have never in my life, ladies and gentlemen, I'm 49 years old, almost 50 years old. I've been in some harrowing situations, right? I have I have been in some serious serious situations, right? But never once, never once in my life have I ever feared for my life the way I did. In that trip and we got stuck there uh, we finally the car finally went over to the side of the road and got stuck luckily off the road 
uh, my co-worker was out of the car pushing pushing trying to guide the car in one direction or the other he was pushing he was he was he was trying his best while i was just doing whatever and uh the um uh we finally got off the side of the road and luckily by some miracle after about a couple of hours of being stuck there these plows decided to just it was like a convoy of plows you know and salt trucks and stuff coming kind of clear the road and one of them my saving grace happened to cut right beside me and plow like a little right beside me. And it gave me about that much of, if I could just get over the hump, I could get on that road and get somewhere. And I was able to, I was able to, my partner was able to push the car. We were able to get traction to that point. And then the exit was only like a half mile up the road, got off the exit, stayed at a hotel overnight. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I honestly thought I was done. I, I thought I was finished. Uh, uh, when when I when my car went across three lanes of traffic, and at th this point they weren't slowing down, right? They they weren't at the slow speed they were when all the other craziness was going on. But ladies and gentlemen, I didn't think I was coming back. I didn't think uh, I didn't think there was gonna be any more classes for me or anything like that. It was uh, it was a it was a strange experience. Well, that was my little story, and that's what I was doing last week when I wasn't having a class, right? So. Ended up stuck in Tennessee in the mountains uh, for a couple of days, uh, you know, uh, finally got home Thursday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, and then finally got home Thursday. And uh, yeah, the, uh, <laughs> it was, it was insane. It was insane. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, um, I'm going to definitely be uh, working on new tires for the car if I ever have to do that again never going anywhere without a set of snow socks or snow chains. Uh, and, um, and, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to do that too many times ever in my life. Uh, I know. <laughs> All right. That being said, uh, uh, yeah, Jesus saved me. Uh, he wasn't done with me yet. There's still a purpose for me. I don't know what that purpose is yet, but there's still a purpose for me being around. So let's see if it's to teach you guys and girls anything, uh, in this, uh, crazy CAD CAM design world. All right, but yes, thank God, thank thank God, I'm okay. I'm 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 blessed. Uh, I I am. We were. I, I'm not joking. I'm not. Uh, I'm making lighthearted and everything. But it was the most terrified I've ever been in my life that I was not going to make it. That I was done. And uh, you know, I've almost drowned in the ocean, and I wasn't as scared as I was in that car. All right, especially with them semis, man. They were, oh, God, this one semi got that close to me. The whole trailer, it was slow motion. Watch that trailer come by my car. Yeah, oh, just like, oh, my goodness. But uh, it was crazy. Anyway, all right, let's get over and let's do something with this box and see where we've left off, what we've got to uh, do and kind of recap because it's been a while and uh, see what we can get with it. So let's switch over to... Thanks for, thanks for sticking around for my story, ladies and gentlemen. Um, all right, let's see where we're at here. Camera two, yep, that's it. And let's see if I can turn the camera just a bit to get rid of that corner. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Um, so... Uh, there's all kinds of stuff going on here on the screen. I've got all kinds of, you know, patriotic little things. The White House. I've got uh, uh, the eagle we worked on the last time. I've got the Liberty Bell, Mount Rushmore, Statue of Liberty, and some eagles and things. I even have a bunt, bunting flag, you know, a flag bunting, um, to see if I want to do something with that. Uh, maybe three of those along the back. Got a cannon. All kinds of things we'll see what we can do with uh, and everything. But let's take a quick recap as to what we do have. So this box uh, is, let's go to our sheets here. And uh, we are working with material uh, that is uh, 12 inches in length. Uh, roughly between uh, the, the sides and everything are about 3 inches uh, tall. Uh, half inch thick material for this box and everything. Uh, the top itself, the lid, because there's going to be an eagle card. We'll look at that in a minute, a kind of a wavy flag and an eagle. It is 10 and a half by six and a half uh, by three quarter inches thick. 
And let's uh, take a look at that top to recap. And uh, <laughs> yeah, um, all right. Let's see here. Let's get over here into our 3D view. All right, so this is going to be the lid of the box. And um, the lid, I am almost positive. I'm not 100% sure on it right now, but I'm almost positive that uh, I'm just going to do a hinged lid uh, with small little brass hinges and things. Um, I do not think that I'm going to do any kind of uh, fitted lid box with a little notch where it pops in or anything like that. I think on this particular keepsake box, I'm thinking that I want it to be hinged. And um, uh, you can see if I, uh, let me see if I can really quickly pop myself back up on the screen for a minute. In this kind of box here, uh, the uh, lid is basically just a simple hinged lid, right? And not everything can be done on the CNC. I could do this on the CNC if I want, but also I like using my hand tools and stuff. So a few chisels and things, I'll, uh, you know, make the uh, little areas for the hinges and stuff. But I think that's what I'm going to go with uh, is a hinged lid. So let's, um, let's go back there and everything. And uh, so I don't need a whole lot of meat i uh, got plenty of meat to take out just a little bit of material i need for the small hinges i'm not sure uh until i get the parts cut out how what i want to do there but uh, i think it's going to be hinged all right so our lid is just going to be this this wavy flag so the whole top there's not going to be a frame around it or anything like that the ex the top of this box is going to be this wavy flag from edge to edge and everything and um, the uh, the project itself um, when let me come in here the uh, bear with me just one second let me get my act together This is my profile cutout, and uh, it is uh, ten and a half So I'm going with a ten and a half by six, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and this board, going back there. Ten and a half by six and a half. So, um, the is my lid gonna have? Let me see if my if my flag is gonna go the full length, or if I'm gonna have a bit of a frame around it. Am I carving it down? Got to remember what we talked about. Let's see here. I think it's getting pocketed out there, but it's going to get carved here. Yes, yeah, so let me correct myself uh, with that. My um, lid is going to be 10 and a half by six and a half, which is the size of the box, the overall size. Uh, and it will have a frame around. My apologies. Uh, it'll have this uh, frame and this will get carved down into it. Um, if I decide to change that, we will figure that out uh, here shortly but that's what it is so incorrect information apologize about that it's been a couple weeks got to refresh my memory now to give you an idea of where we left off or what we were working on and all uh, because we haven't created the tool pass and everything for the legit but we did create the tool pass for the front here and if we recall 
Um, we did a uh, raised almost type V carve type carving with a texture uh, and what that looks like Let's see if we can preview this all right what that looked like was this here and on the back side flipped uh, over uh, on the back side the miters were uh, cut and the profile cut out. So let's get rid of this. And so on that front piece, this was the front of the box with the miters and we used the chamfer tool path uh, to cut those. We're gonna be doing that multiple times on these other parts and everything, but this was the front of the box here. And what I'll end up doing is adding some glazing, uh, like a dark glazing down in the shadows and area and everything. Uh, probably a, um, a, a wiping type stain. Uh, it'll be a dark brown. I'm sorry, my nose started itching for some reason. Bear with me one second. Oh my goodness. Um, the uh, to really bring out uh, the details and everything because I'm not going to really paint or anything on this uh, but I do want to add some color to it um, I don't know what wood I'm gonna use yet excuse me one second I gotta sneeze I don't know why my nose just decided hey let's uh, let's screw up his concentration here but um, I think I'm gonna carry the texturing uh, around on the other sides as well. That's one consistent thing I'm gonna carry, but the designs are gonna vary from side to side and everything. Um, so let's take a look and uh, uh, really quickly. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, shout out to my uh, you know uh, paid members and everything. You guys are funny, especially you Brooks Martin. I just read it, my eyes just caught your comment about do uh, Farts have lumps. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. That was funny, Brooks. All right. Anyhow, it just caught me. But uh, thank you all for the uh, well wishes. And um, uh, women, uh, women who see and sees, love uh, that the inset with the trim. It'll really look nice. Yeah, I think I think it will look good uh, with that frame around it. We'll see on that lid how that goes. All right. And thank you, Ronnie, uh, for the compliment and all. Now. So that's where we ended up with on our last class. We had kind of gotten the, the model brought in, didn't create the tool pass for the, the lid yet or anything, but we did start working on the layout of the front. And then we started kind of uh, figuring out the other sides and all, but we did not get to them, right? Uh, and so what we are going to do today is we're going to get to them. So. The one thing I would like to carry on, this vector right here, uh, this is where my um, design, um, uh, my miters and everything, th these ends on the ends here, these are what are getting cut off. And so this rectangle here represents the length, the full length of my part uh, and everything. And it's that 10 and a half inches long, right? So what I'd like to do is I would like to copy that over to uh, one of the other sheets uh, and um, uh, it will be the, this is the front, it's going to be the back, you know, that's the, the same height. So I'm going to copy this to the back sheet so that I have kind of that boundary that I'm working with, you know, it's not the full boundary and everything, but it just kind of, the sides is what I'm, you know, more so the length, you know, I need to, I need to know my, my, my limits and everything. And then as far as the actual uh, area that's getting carved, you know, I want to kind of stay consistent with that as well. And that's this rectangle here. Uh, this is the rectangle when we're looking at the 3D view. This is kind of that rectangle that you see here uh, and everything. 
And so um, with for that, uh, we're going to, uh, I'm gonna also copy that to the back sheet. And um, it's also this rectangle with the height. So all of my little graphics, you know, all the way around, the things that I'm doing on the sides also too, uh, I wanna restrict them to the same height on this vector. The length is gonna vary because my sides are shorter than my front and back, but I wanna keep the height consistent. So I am going to take this rectangle and copy it to the other, the left and the right side as well. So I'm gonna copy, right click on it. I'm gonna copy to the left side. I'm gonna select it again, and I'm going to copy to the right side sheet, copy to sheet and everything. And what that will do, that will, uh, I gotta get them centered and everything, but what that will do is it'll give me the height. I wanna kind of stick to that same height. And one of the main reasons I wanna to stick to that height is because if you recall, this is another thing that we finished uh, on um, that very first class on this was the foot frame. And let me, let's refresh uh, our memory on the foot frame here. Uh, what I mean by that is the front, back, and the two sides are gonna sit down in this frame uh, of feet here and uh, this is the design of the feet. They're going to get profile cut. Uh, and the pocket area here, um, this is uh, we're, what we're looking at right now is the back side. Uh, so the um, pocket here is uh, when it gets cut, when this frame, if you will, gets made or glued together, the box is going to sit down inside of it. So let's take a quick look at those pieces, those parts, um, and uh, we'll uh, uh, see if we can jog everyone's recall. Okay. Now these parts are going to be uh, held down with two-sided tape. I'm not gonna do any type of tabs or anything uh, with them on the project board, uh, it's going to uh, be held down with some type of two-sided tape. But uh, this will be the outside. Now, as far as the top edge on the back side or anything like that, I most likely will, when the frame is glued up, when this frame is glued up, again, not everything is going to be done, you know, on the CNC. I have other machines that do fabulous jobs at their job. You know, they do what they do well. So after the frame is uh, glued together, cleaned up and sanded and all that good stuff, uh, I'm most likely going to take it either over to the router table. Uh, and in the router table, I have a small round over bit that will round over uh, the top edge, a small eighth inch round over that will just break that edge and give it just a nice transition, a nice round over. I'll either do that or I will take a little uh, chamfer plane, block plane, whatever you want to call it, and I will, uh, you know, plane a chamfer on all four sides, a very small chamfer again, just to break that transition uh, rather than being just square and boring. I'm going to have some type of transition into the box and I'm thinking that most likely it will just be a very small round over. Uh, but um, it's one of those things where when the, uh, when the project is coming together and all the parts are getting put together and everything, um, it, the, 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 it starts to talk to you a little bit about, you know, this is this is how we're going to finish it, you know, uh, and everything. And so I will determine right then and there, is it going over to the router table for that round over? Is it going to get a nice chamfer? Would that chamfer look good as it transitions in? I'll probably at that point have the box sitting inside of it so I can just kind of gauge what would look good. Um, but it's not one of those things that I'm going to do on the CNC. It's going to be done after the fact, after it's assembled. 
uh, and uh, I will make the decision of which of the two ways I'm going to go with that, but it's going to be one of those two ways. Um, uh, it'll either be I'll hand plane it and break that edge really nicely, uh, or I'll, um, with my little chamfer plane or what have you, but uh, uh, otherwise it'll go to the router table with a little round over bit. Okay, so, but on the back side here, this area here, you know, that when this frame is together, it's going to have like a little foundation for the box to sit in, right? So the bottom of the box is going to be covered by this wall, if you will, this lip uh, and everything. So what I want to do is I'm going to go uh, into the 2D view and uh, I just want to recall my height, you know, and everything. So I'm going to take my drawing tools i'm going to go to my dimension tool and uh from the top of the leg part uh, not the rectangle up here but this lower rectangle i'm going to measure from here to here and uh we're looking at just um uh a uh, wrong type of measurement right we're looking at a horizontal measurement on a vertical <laughs> so let's uh control z and undo that and let's do that proper we want a vertical measurement and um, we'll go here to here so it's a quarter of an inch so that's more realistic um, and uh, so the um, when the box is sitting down there a quarter inch of the bottom of that box is going to be hugged if you will by this frame right this frame this foot frame so in our in our designs and everything we want to make sure and I, I'm, I'm almost positive I accounted for that um, on here but uh, we want to make sure that uh, when that box sits in yeah um, plenty of room it's gonna just the, this recessed area with all the decorative design is just going to be right above that foot area and uh, it's going to be perfect. Okay, cool beans. All right, so um, let's go ahead and come in there. <laughs> and uh, thanks for all the uh, uh, emoticons and the support. I appreciate you. All right, so let's get into the rest of this. Now, um, I'm thinking I want to work on the left and right side kind of work my way around uh, and then I'm gonna figure out the back we'll talk about the back in just a moment uh, so let's go ahead and switch it uh, to the left side I'm double clicking on these boards these different sheets I've got all the sheets are laid out in here and I'm double clicking on them to make them active so there's a couple of ways that we can do that Number one, if we're in the toolpath side of the software, we can drop down and choose the sheet from here to make it active. Number two, in our sheets category on the left, we can double click on the sheet in the list over here to make it active. Uh, we can also uh, right click and left click on activate to make it active. Or in the main area, we can just double click on it to make it active, okay? So any one of the options will do. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to take this vector that we copied over and I'm going to center it on my workpiece. Okay. And uh, just to refresh here, <clears throat> we are, um, our sides, left and right sides, they're eight inches long. Okay. And the box when it's fully assembled uh, after it's fully assembled uh, the box is gonna be six and a half by ten and a half okay and so on the uh, miners and let me see if I can pop myself up let me see let me see let me see I'm trying to use a mouse where there's no mouse uh, let's go back to full here all right, so on these half inch walls and everything where the miter is happening and all, we have our long point and our short point, right? So short point to short point, and then on the outside, long point to long point. And 
the miter, that miter is going to be based on, you know, that 45 degrees. And so if I have a, if I have a, ba -ba -bum, let me draw this out for you. <clears throat> All right, my box wall is a half inch thick, right? And if I am cutting, oops, a 45 degree miter in here, let's go to 45. Let's get my snapping working here. My snapping is killing me. Okay, space bar. On a half inch, I'm using a 90 degree V bit uh, to do a 45 degree miter, but the distance uh, of material, this short edge from here to, let me put the 45 also here. Let me get that. I wonder where my smart snapping is not snapping isn't that crazy wow ladies and gentlemen my snapping's not snapping in the gray area it's got to be in the white area it's throwing me off it's killing me here hold on a All right, we're going to close that for a minute. I'm gonna take that bad boy and drag it onto the screen because I'm not gonna play with it. Where the smart snapping comes into effect here, I'm gonna snap to 45 degrees. I should have done that like 10 minutes ago. And, uh, oops, I missed my mark. Okay, all right. So here, the inside point to point, that's my short point, short point to short point. If you ever hear that term when you're building something, you know, long point to long point measurements, uh, that's our outside long point to long point uh, on these miters and everything. And so the distance on a half inch uh, sheet uh, of material that I'm gonna lose when I cut that miter uh, here, so from here to the inside of that short point uh, on a half inch piece of material is a half inch. On a three quarter, it's three quarter, and that kind of thing. So um, the uh, I've got to you know be mindful that when I cut these miters and all uh, this on this eight inch piece of material, okay, um, I'm going you know from eight inches. Uh, Somewhere in that eight inches is going to be a six and a half inch, and that will be my long point. Long point to long point is going to be six and a half. Um, the uh, I've got to account for my my half inch of material, right? So um, anyway, don't let me confuse you on that, but that's what it is. All right, half inch on a half inch piece of material, and that's what my material is. So. On my eight inch piece of wood, I'm using an eight inch piece of wood uh, and all. Let's view guidelines, delete all guides. I'm going to take and create another guide relative to its position, eight inches over. Okay, that's this end. And then from the this guide here, I'm gonna come in on there um, an inch and a half. So six and a half is gonna be my length, and then seven, eight, right? So an inch and a half. And so uh, that inch and a half uh, is gonna be divided by two, right? So uh, three quarters on one side, three quarters on the other. So I'm gonna take my guide here and move that 0.75, not move, but create a guide there. Right click on this guide, come in negative 
0 0.75. Let's try that one more time. Oop. Negative 0.75. There we go. And the distance, this will be kind of the, this will be my long point, if you will. Um, from here to here, that is going to be my six and a half. If I snap to the right place, it would be dead on. Let's try that again. Snapping. <laughs> one minute I'm on, one minute I'm short. But uh, you get the idea. So um, it's six and a half. So those enter, that's going to be my piece, right? And then from there, that's my outside of my long point. And from there on the back side, side two, you know, the, the inside, there's going to be that uh, half inch, 45 degree miter, right? So I need to make sure that whatever I'm carving, whatever I'm carving in this project doesn't really go too deep, that it could be, that it could cut through the miter or anything like that. And I want to stay away from that, uh, the miters and stuff. So on here, um, I'm going to take this rectangle and I'm going to bring it in there, bring it in here. That is my, that's gonna be the part that gets cut out when it gets profile cut uh, and everything. Um, when this gets cut here, not, not profile, but uh, when that gets carved. And um, from there on the back side, another half inch in, I just got to know that there's miters going on. So on my carvings, I long story short, the whole reason for all that rambling and everything is I do not want to go too deep because at the edge here, if I go too deep in my carving, I'm cutting right into that miter, right on the back side and all. Now the miter is going to be a half inch in. It's going to be at its thickest point, right? My material is going to be at its thickest point, you know, a half inch over, but right in this little window that wood is getting milled away so i don't want to go too deep and we accounted for that on the other part here and all of our cuts i limited uh, all of those parts to a 16th of an inch deep so to get the detail and everything that i wanted on that three-dimensional view uh, we carved in the total depth texture and everything, uh, the total depth set was a 16th of an inch, and I'm going to maintain that all the way around. How many people thought, holy cow, all of that just for that point? <laughs> that is, uh, that is, yes, the answer is yes on that one. All right, so <laughs> all of that for that point. So we are, um, As a teacher of metric, I feel this. We're always obvious. <laughs> yes. Now the um, the uh, put yourself in corner. Lanny, are you in the way? Lain oh, I'm in the way. <laughs> Jesus, Lanny, hold on a second, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. I put myself in the corner. Let's talk about it again. Thank you for that. I, sh I need to really start looking over and all. I was, I was in depth there. But let's go back to what I was talking about here. Get my head out of the way. There we go. All right. Uh, coming in here on my 8-inch piece of material that I'm using for my left and right side, of that, only six and a half inches is getting utilized of that part, six and a half inches here. And, and um, I have to recall that from that long point, this is long point to long point here, six and a half inches, from that long point in one half of an inch, I have to remember there's going to be a miter on the back side of this, so do not cut too deep if you're depending on what your carving is. 
right? We do need an alert button for that for sure. Uh, so on the uh, guides here on this eight inch piece, I created a guide inward by three quarters of an inch on this side, created a guide inward by three quarters of an inch on that side because three quarters plus three quarters is an inch and a half. And an inch and a half plus six and a half equals eight, right? This is waste. This is waste. This is a place for me to put my clamps or whatever it is that I'm doing, right? But um, keeping in mind that from this six and a half inches in, coming in to the short points, we have short point to short point, long point to long point. That's going to be a top view down looking at our part. If I carve, I cannot carve too deep in these areas here because I could carve through into that miter. Now, uh, and uh, you know, I could lose critical detail and stuff. So I need to stay in this area here and I need to not carve too, too deep. So long story short that you saw my big head in the way uh, was getting to the point that when we're carving and everything, I've decided that we're going to stay within we're gonna cut just a 16th of an inch deep and everything. And I'm going to make sure that my carving area where, I, where I'm carving, my little work area, my rectangle area, that um, I'm not in my miter area. Just like this front here, this is the end of my box. My miter's coming in to this point and this is the boundary of where my carving will begin. I'm gonna do the same thing up at the sides above. So I'm going to take this rectangle. I'm going to hold down. I'm not going to hold down anything. I'm going to hit control C, control V for copy and paste on this. And um, I'm going to resize this part, keeping the uh, height the same but I'm going to come in here and bring in my width by that one inch, half inch on one side, half inch on the other. So it's gonna be five and a half. And uh, right from the center, so I'm just gonna bring that in. Okay, so whatever I do as far as my carvings are concerned, they need to be within this boundary, okay? My 0.3 inches from the bottom, that's going to be sitting into that uh, the feet, right? So I don't want anything below that. So that's going to be my bottom line. That gives me just a nice slight little reveal. And then my carving in here is going to be within this area. So I'm not going to run into any, uh, my miter or anything crazy. All right, let's get rid of these numbers. And uh, sorry about my head being in the way. <laughs> Uh, we do need an alert button. Um, I'm not sure. I wish there was a way to make a button like that. All right, let's get this uh, moved in and up. Okay. Now, I know that, um, I know, I'm not going to bring myself up anymore, but uh, when I'm looking at the box, okay, now my box is going to have straight sides, carved decorative details. There's not going to be any curved sides uh, such as this one and all. Uh, but I know that when I'm looking from the sides, if I'm seeing this box on the shelf or what have you uh, in everything and I'm admiring the front, I'm admiring the side. Uh, I thought about having the two eagles facing one another and then something in the middle, right? But it's just a little bit too much for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have uh, the eagles um, basically facing uh, forward. So when I'm looking at this, uh, I want the uh, you know the eagles uh, facing forward, um, no matter what angle I'm looking at. So I want them always kind of looking forward here and everything. And then I'm going to also have something else in there as well uh, on each side. And, uh, and also just one eagle on each side. So this eagle here is going to be my left side. Okay. So he's going to be in the back uh, part of this left side facing 
this way, just like he is, position there. And this other uh, guy over here, um, let me get him on the right sheet. He's on the wrong sheet right now. I'm going to move him. I'm not going to copy him. I'm going to move him to the right side. And um, everything I do on the left, except for some of the decorative design, I'm going to basically mirror over uh, to the right uh, kind of deal and stuff. So first off, this vector, I actually don't, uh, he is the same eagle. So I'm actually going to uh, do myself a service here, and I'm going to uh, delete all of this. And I'm just going to take this, because my left and right side will match up, and I'm just going to copy it over to the side, and then I'll mirror it. So these three vectors will get copied to the right side. And on the right side, I'll just flip it horizontally and mirror it. Ba -ba -bum. Okay. Cool beans. Now, I am... Um, I... I've been on the fence with this. I've been thinking about this, what I want to on each side and all that wonderful jazz uh, and everything. And I think I am going to I think I'm going to do uh, I, I'm going to size some things down. I want a couple of things here. But I think I'm going to do Lady Liberty and the Liberty Bell on one side. Um, kind of slightly stacked, you know, in a diagonal. And then uh, Mount Rushmore, I think I'm gonna do on the right side. And I think I'm gonna go that route. So let's get these on and see what we can do there. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take this and this, and I'm gonna move it to the left side sheet. I'm gonna take this while I'm here and move that to the right side sheet. Okay. And these vectors, these are just graphics uh, that you can pull right off the internet. Uh, Liberty Bell vector, search the term vector, Liberty Bell vector and Statue of Liberty, Vector. There's all kinds of uh, different um, uh, graphics and things. And that's where these come from. And I have, I've used these in quite a few projects over the years. So I've got them already traced and all uh, and, and vectorized and stuff. So they just get imported in. Now I'm going to size this down and because of the size of uh, Lady Liberty, when I size her down and all, I am I want the most detail that I can possibly get out of all these little bitty lines and everything and all. And uh, so I want to, uh, I'm going to use a 22 degree V-bit carving liner. The Whiteside SC50 is going to be my go-to bit for a lot of this stuff. And I'm not just V carving them in, they're gonna be raised up. So uh, to create like an island for her to be carved on and an island for the eagle and an island for the uh, Liberty Bell, I have to create an offset around these three items. So when I'm sizing them, I need to make sure that I leave room for that offset. And we're talking, you know, uh, a small amount, no more than a 16th of an inch, but really more, more like a, a 32nd. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to grab the corner to keep the aspect ratio. And I'm just going to bring her in a little bit and I'm going to ungroup U is the keyboard shortcut 
for ungroup and I'm going to click on the outside profile that goes all the way around here and I'm going to offset that outward. A 30 second. And you can see, you know, it looks like a lot here when you're up close and then working on these small parts, but it's really not. It's a 30 second, right? It's not much at all. But um, if I were to uh, undo that, if I were to go a 16th, if you will, uh, you know, double that, 625, uh, 0.0625, uh, you know, it's, it's a little much, right? Uh, and everything. So I want to want a tight little island to carve in. And also we're going to go a 30 second on the offset. And what I want is as soon as I hit offset, I want to come in, hold down the shift key and turn off that offset. Just click on it and anything else that is still selected pink, all these other offsets that were created. I need to hit the delete key on the keyboard immediately. I'm not going to click anywhere or anything like that. Um, I'm going to hit the delete key. Now, I've got some overlaps here, these things here uh, that need to get cleaned up, all these little figure eights and stuff. Um, I will uh, go in and clean that up in just a... If you see a vector that is square, has no shape or roundness to it, 99.9% .9 of the time it's trash. Get rid of it, right? Um, if, uh, if it's a figure eight like this one, delete it, get rid of it. You'll get that uh, warning about overlapping and intersecting vectors, but those square vectors, uh, and everything that you see, um, those are just pixels. They're trash pixels. Even these, uh, little guys here that have some shape to them, they, they have a purpose. They, they've got some, you know, purpose to them and all, but they're still, it's still trash. You could clean it up if you wanted to, but I'm going to leave them in. But I am going to remove, you know, the uh, the square pixels and everything. I'll leave the round ones uh, are the ones that have some kind of shape to them and stuff. So in here, all of these square vectors here, hold down the shift key. Those there, uh, I'm going to delete all them out. And I'm just going to quickly go through. I'll even get rid of that one there too. When I traced, uh, er, and this vector right here, by the way, this is that offset, that offset right there going up into there. Uh, we're going to be cutting that out and drawing it straight across here in just a moment. Uh, we're not gonna let that vector go up in there. We're gonna kind of round it off down here at the bottom. Um, uh, you'll see that in just a minute. But uh, the um, when I trace this image, I didn't take the time at the time of tracing it to turn up the noise filter. And uh, the result of that was this noise, these square pixels and things. So now I'm paying the price by having to go in and clean everything up. Now I could, of course, uh, go back and retrace it with a higher noise filter uh, to eliminate that, but I'm not going to. I'm just, all right. If I get any warnings thrown up at me, um, which I will for this one right there, if I get any warnings thrown up at me about overlapping or intersecting vectors, I will deal with that. In a moment. All right. Okay, let's deal with the boundary. That way we can move on to the Liberty Bell and everything. Uh, so this vector, this is our offset. That's the furthest line out, ladies and gentlemen, the furthest line out. Uh, this is uh, the vector that we want to create that little island. Well, because of her design, the offset, it, it's creating the offset all up in here in her robe and everything. Uh, I need to go into node editing and I need to cut the vector. Uh, and I'm going to go actually go all the way to the other side 
over here and I'm going to cut the vector and the uh, lower stuff here I want to keep some of that but the upper stuff going up into the row area I don't want that so I'm going to cut the vector here as well and I'm going to just go ahead while I'm at it I'm going to hit delete right there to get rid of that and then this to here I'm going to join with a smooth curve okay and I'm just going to have it curve over to that other line there uh, coming across right here I'm going to come back here and just cut the vector I'm picking a couple of spots cut it there I'm going to get rid of that line that goes up into a row but I don't want that there but I do want this vector here. I'm just going to join with a smooth curve and just I'm going to let it naturally do whatever it does. I'm not going to, you know, force it or anything. Uh, here, I want to cut the vector here. And then over here, I'll cut it. And then I'm going to delete that. And then I'm just going to join that with a smooth curve. And again, you know, just naturally let it kind of go in. Now, even this one coming up into here, I think I'm okay with that. Uh, and everything. I think I'm good with that one, but I don't want it going up and overlapping like it did on these other things and stuff. So um, I am good to go. Let me just uh, do a real quick check on here. I'm going to go into the vector validator and I'm going to look for intersecting and overlapping lines. I've got a few zero length spans on that offset. I'm going to go ahead and clear them up. And I've got two intersections and two overlaps, and that's going to be this figure eight right here. Uh, so when I clear that up and everything, I should be good to go now. I can select her again, search, and be at zero, zero, zero. So get rid of all those. You know overlaps and intersections on the eagle I think the eagle has got some uh, uh, no it's clean I cleaned it last time so that one's good to go now let's get the Liberty Bell in the mix uh, let's size that down now remember I'm going to this vector right here I don't know if you can see that let me get it on the screen. Let me close the tool. We're not ready for tool pass right now. So I got more room on the screen to work with. But this inside vector, that's where I'm working with. So I want to make sure that whatever I do, that it's, you know, here. Uh, let's take her and bump her over. Now, uh, I'm going to do a little play of words and everything um, in very small print. Okay. In very small print, I'm going to add some text here. Right. Uh, and um, I'm, I want it to, uh, you know, I want it to kind of go with the theme or what have you. So uh, I'm going to do, you know, uh, maybe like a give me liberty, liberty, or give me death kind of thing. Um, you know, uh, let's see here. That, um, oh, let's see here. If uh, just to, uh, for those of you, <laughs> I'm going to give you American history or whatever, but um, uh, this, uh, give me liberty or give me death, uh, it's a quotation attributed to uh, Henry Patrick, uh, 1775, March 23rd, 1775. I do not know this off the top of my head. I am quoting what I'm looking over here at the right, even though I'm looking at you. I can see it over here. Uh, and um, it, uh, the, um, he made that at the, uh, Virginia Convention, Second Virginia Convention, and um, 
uh, and John's Church in Richmond, Virginia. Um, and the, I think, I think I'll be okay with that. I, it's going to be small, right? Uh, and um, I need it. You know, we have the We the People here. So somewhere, somewhere over the rainbow, um, somewhere I'm going to have it say something, uh, some kind of little text there. I might not, you know, it might just say, you know what, it doesn't need it. Or it does. I don't know. Let's take a vote. Uh, let freedom ring. There you go. All right. Hold on now. That's a little bit better. Uh, not better. I mean, that's good. That's great. Uh, let freedom ring. Yeah. Who said that? John Thompson. Way to go, John. Uh, the Eagle is going to need an island. And the uh, Liberty Bell is going to need an island uh, to answer your question, uh, John Thompson, as well. Um, we're going to uh, work on those uh, here in just a second. Uh, first things first, we're going to ungroup. U is the keyboard shortcut for ungroup, but the ungroup button is also here. Uh, and uh, we're going to go in and we're going to select the outside perimeter and we're going to do an offset outward. I'm going to keep the offset consistent. I'm going to hold down the shift key. Turn that off, and whatever's remaining in the pink, I'm just going to hit the delete key. I don't want that offset. I just want that outside perimeter just to give it a nice little island. And then I can come in and I can um, go back in and regroup that. I can do the same thing with Lady Liberty, but let me first of all, let me ungroup this. Make sure I only have the Liberty Bell selected. All right, now let's group that. Let's group that. And on the Eagle, we're gonna come in and select the outside perimeter. We're gonna offset outward as well. Hold down the Shift key Turn that off, and then whatever is selected pink still, there's some stuff in the neck here in the beak. We're going to hit delete. We don't want it. We just want that outside vector. And now I need to come in here on the eagle. I'll group it together, but I need to move it up. Okay. And um, I'm going to keep, let me undo that. Uh, I'm going to keep him sized up the way he is. And I want to make sure that I, with that offset, I want to make sure that it matches on this side. So I just bumped him up to uh, the, for that offset. So I will take and copy him over to the other side. Let me do that right now. Copy to the right side. And then on the right side, let's make that active really quickly. These two eagles uh, would look great uh, facing each other in a, another project or what have you, um, uh, for sure. But for this one, I'm going to just have the one on each side. Uh, let me mirror him over. Okay. All right. So let freedom ring. I like that. And I'm going to use a... Um, let's come over here and let's make this active again. Let me close this tool for a minute. Okay, we're gonna size that. Dee, dee, dee. Uh, 
I just want these subtle hints of things around. Um, they, you know, they don't need to be like just, but I just want these little things. When you're looking at them, you see these things and all. Now on this font, I am going to use the American Scribe font, um, which is kind of, uh, that's the font that uh, looks a lot like the constitutional text and everything, the declaration uh, text and all. So I'm going to All right, this spacing right here, I want uh, to move the word ring. I have the ring on a separate line because I actually wanna move it closer and I actually wanna move it over here. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna close the text tool. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna break this text block into individual text lines. So break text block into lines. And what that does is this line of text, it allows me to kind of, you know, um, move it around and I want to kind of put it up here and um, then as a whole I can size this to just about that now on these I want to weld them together because of the overlapping lines so if you have 10 10.5 11 11.5 you can select the weld tool uh, and I'm gonna just replace that with the welded text. So the weld tool, select the text, hit the weld tool. I'm gonna hit replace and replace that. Now, I've done that, it's a vector now, so if I need to go back and change my spelling or anything like that, I gotta just delete it, redo it, and all that good stuff. Okay. Um, don't forget the quarter on the bottom. Don't forget the quarter. Like a 25 cent piece quarter? Is that what you're referring to, Kevin? Kevin, let me know what you mean by that so I know what you mean by that. Okay, all right. Uh, don't forget the quarter at the bottom. The quarter. Okay, so we've got that text there. Now, this is gonna be raised up because all this stuff is gonna be pocketed out. So this text will be raised up here and um, and everything, so that'll be just a nice little homage down there. And we don't have to try to fill every bit of space or anything like that. Um, and, um, and all, so quarter inch. Oh, yes, that's already accounted for by this line, uh, uh, Kevin. So just great, uh, John Thompson, that quarter of an inch. This from the bottom of the material to this line here is 0.3 inches. So that quarter of an inch, there's going to be a slight reveal, 0 0.05, 50 thousandths of an inch, uh, reveal right above my frame and everything. This is 0.3. So uh, when we are from the bottom of the material up to here, uh, that is that uh, 0.255. Am I centered? Because it should be 0.3. Give me just a second, align to center. And it might be, um, it might be that I had, uh, let me check this one as well. It's probably 2.255, uh, but it was rounded up to 0.3 a moment ago. Let me check, check, check. Because I got three decimal points there. That is 0.3. What am I measuring? Let me zoom, 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 zoom. I am hitting my marks. Let's try that again. Vertical from the bottom. Snapped. To the bottom. To the line. 0.3. Come in here. Yeah. 
I might put the Liberty Bell in the middle and then her in the top right corner. Let me see. We'll figure it out. Um, let me measure this real quick. I'm going to call it good. <laughs> I don't know why it's one versus the other. It's the same vector. Let me see. Let me zoom, 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 zoom. They're right on top of each other. Let me measure over here on the left. It's insane. Yeah, I don't know why one is 0.2 and the other is 0.3. They're both the same. Anyway, the it's accounted for already, uh, John and Kevin. All right, so uh, let's, um, let me just make sure that that's centered and yeah i'm just gonna call that i'm okay with okay um it's accounted for all right now now i'm gonna now i'm wondering if i'm centered on this one um Bear with me. If that box is centered, if I'm at point three at the bottom, I should be at point three at the top. <laughs> All right, I don't know what it is then. Uh, let's see here. This box is 10 and a half by 2.4 inches. This box. is uh, 10 and a half by 2.49. Uh, so that's gonna account for it. So let me resize that. 2.40. Let me center it. Let me measure. There's our point three. All right, let me size this one. I don't know how it got bigger from there to there, but we'll deal with it. And then, so let me change this, which means I gotta copy the eagle back over again. Let me bring that in. Bring that in. Bring just a little bit. Kind of almost like, do I want the bell in the middle and then her on the left or the right? We'll find out when we carve here. Okay. Let's take a look at what we've got so far. Let's select all of this with the inside vector. Let's do a V-carve toolpath here. And um, I want to limit it to a 16th of an inch. I'm going to use the 22 degree V bit. Uh, I'll use an eighth inch and a 16th inch end mill. This is a very small box, so a lot of little details and everything. Uh, so a 16th inch end mill is going to play its role as well. I want to do a raster cut, and let's calculate that also. Yeah, make the bell small and put it in the middle. I'm thinking so too. I'm thinking the bell needs to be in the middle. And let freedom ring needs to be under it in the middle, and then Statue of Liberty on the right is what I'm thinking. Um, we'll come back to the vector validator in just a moment, but let me just take a look. I think, I think, I think aesthetically that would probably be more pleasing to me. I uh, let's pop over here and preview the visible toolpath.
let's turn off the color. Now there's going to be texture all around in this and everything. Um, this is all this flat area is going to have a texture. It's going to have the same texture and everything. I think so. I think John, I think Roger, I think, I think that's, I think that's what we're going to do. So let's do a little switcheroo. Let's take Lady Liberty. Let's center the bell up and down, or let's center it completely on the material. There we go. We can do let freedom ring, let freedom up here ring down here. Um, let's delete that out for right now. Let's take Lady Liberty. I want to align her up and down there. The eagle. Okay. All right. Let's get the text back in there. I think that's going to look aesthetically more pleasing. Uh, text. Uh, let freedom ring. I don't know if I want the exclamation point, but we'll leave it there for right now. Okay, once again, we're going to break the text block into lines. Okay. And uh, we'll throw that. Now, here's what I do when I want something centered in a small area or what have you. I take a line and I draw a line. Uh, I'm going to draw a line from here straight down to the top of the bell right here. Now, the reason why I'm drawing a line is because that line has a natural center point. So if I want the word let freedom centered in this space, I can then select the let freedom first. I can select this line second, and I can use the alignment tool to align up and down to that last item, that second selected item, and I can center it. So it's up and centered, uh, up and down there, right? And if I want it centered over this bell as far as left to right, I can select let freedom and I can select this outside profile uh, last and I can go left to right, right? Make sure it's centered there. And um, that line, you know, serves its purpose, right? So I can make sure that I'm, you know, I have the same amount of spacing from here up to here and things. Um, I can actually give this a little bit more. I'm gonna hold down the shift key now that I got it centered and I can actually give it just a little bit more love. Uh, as long as I got clearance up there, I'm good with that. And then on ring here, I am uh, going to hold down the shift key and select the bell and I'll align left to right. And then I will take a line and I'll draw from the bottom of the bell to the bottom of that line there. I will select ring. I'll select the line last, a line up and down, get that centered and now I need to give myself a little bit of room here. I'm okay if I go over too much, but what I'll do is I'm just going to bump the size. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to bump the size of the bell down just a little bit. And bump that up just a little bit. But I'm also going to actually stretch this out. Um, it... Uh, yeah, bear with me. I'm going to lower that dot down over the eye a little bit more. I'm going to If 
Bum, 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 bum. Let me think. Is it a mistake to break it up like that? Um, let me think, let me think, let me think, think, think. All right, let's not do that. Let's not break it up like that. Give me just a second. Let's go back into our text block. Make that one line, align it to the center. Let's raise the bell up. Doing the bell tolls. And let's center it on the bell. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key, select the bell, uh, line left to right. Let's try that again. Okay, that is centered on the bell, but I'm right in the uh, the birdie's eagle's foot. So I I'm gonna draw a line from the tip of the toe. Nope. That wasn't the tip of the toe. Let's try that again. Over straight across uh, to Lady Liberty's robe. Select let freedom ring. Hold down the shift key. Select the line last. Align left to right to bump that over. So I'm centered on that line. So I'm centered in this space here. And let's give it just a little bit more size. Hold down the shift key. Not a lot. It may not seem like it, but from the tip of that, to where I measured to here, the distance between those two is equal to the distance between these two. But just to clarify one more time, I'm gonna draw my line straight across. I don't know why I'm not snapping anymore, but we'll figure that out later. A line left to right. All right, I'm gonna call that done. I'm gonna hold down the shift key, keeping it centered where it's at, and I'm gonna drag this over just a little bit. All right, and I'm gonna weld that together. Weld. All right, let's go back into the toolpath. Let's uh, select that all again and recalculate that. Oh, lay the bell and do it as a curve over it, right? We could do that as, as well. Got a, I got some overlap somewhere. Uh, we'll correct that. It's gonna be in the text most likely. Um, let's reset the preview and preview. Okay. All right. Really doesn't pop right now until we add the texture in here. Uh, let's go ahead and add the texture. And now when we're doing the texture, we only need, uh, let me ungroup the Eagle ungroup the bell, ungroup Lady Liberty here, and we only need the outside profiles to be selected, not the inside vectors, just the outside profiles, uh, and then all of the text. Okay, so make sure just that. And 
on the texturing toolpath, okay, uh, we're going to um, come down and start at a sixteenth of an inch. That's how deep the cut is. And all the parameters are the same as before uh, on, on side one. So I'm going to keep them as is. We're going to calculate this, but my distance, how far off, uh, that's the number that I, uh, you know, I'm going to, for right now, I'm just going to put in a um, 16th of an inch, but I want to go back to side one, look at that, and I want to match it because I think it's perfect over there. Uh, but um, I'll just for right now I'll put a sixteenth of an inch to get the texture on the board, and um, let me come back over here really quickly. In my texture here, sixteenth of an inch. So we did go with that sixteenth of an inch. Great, that's perfect. That's what I want. Let's go back and take a look at how we did. And yeah, we could have that text curving over the bell, um, uh, you know, over the bell and everything, but I think we're going to be okay here. Let's take a look. So that's going to be the side. And uh, to get the, uh, I'm going to kind of stay um, consistent. I'm going to take this object here and I'm going to copy to the other side. This is the vector, you know, here. Uh, I want to copy to the other side. I'm going to flip this over and on the other side, I'm going to draw a line from here down to here, space bar to finish, from here down to here, space bar to finish, and on the um, It would help if I took this line and maximized it like a goofball. To the top there, let's try that one. I can turn off the grid lines now. To the top. This needs to go to the top. Okay, on the chamfer tool path, we're going to have a chamfer and we're going to be selecting our two lines. So here and here. Now, the lines represent the deepest part of the carve. Okay, so we are carving that miter. This is the deepest part or the highest part here coming down to the deepest part, which is the edge here. And so we want to make sure that the lines are facing the right way. These on this side are correct. They're pointing to the line. That, that's the deepest part of the cut. These on this side are incorrect. They are on the wrong side of the line. They need to be on this side of the line facing where the arrows are facing that line. So I have to swap my start points. And um, so I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to come down here and make this the start point. And those lines will switch position. Okay. And we can now uh, come in here. I'm going to be using a 90 degree V bit. Uh, the width I'm cutting over is a half inch. The depth I'm cutting is a half inch. The thickness of my material 
and everything, and uh, we're going to calculate that toolpath. And then the final toolpath is going to be a profile cut, uh, just kind of cleaning up and cutting that all the way out. Again, this part is going to be two-sided taped down at this point uh, on this other side after that other side gets carved and all. I still have to put in my alignment pin holes. I haven't done that yet. Uh, we're working, we'll work on that next. But uh, this is going to be a profile cut, uh, cutting all the way through my material uh, with a quarter inch end mill on the outside of the line. I'm not going to put any tabs in and everything. Um, and uh, so when we preview this, we'll have our miter cut and then the profile cutout. We'll have our waist here. And so when we look at this, uh, this will be our side piece. Okay. All right, now, uh, Kurt says, I missed it. What was your text slant degree? Um, if you're referring to the angle of the text here for when it's carved, I'm using a 22 degree V bit on this. Uh, number one, I want a 22 degree V bit because everything is really small and I want all the detail that I can get, all the depth and detail that I can get out of these things, uh, as much depth and definition that I can get. I'm going to be adding some toner, um, glazing and everything to really bring out the highlights and all unfortunately i can't really do that as a preview i can't really show you know what that what that would look like and stuff um and everything uh but um it uh you know to really highlight those those areas and those accents and all but the text is a 22 degree v bit that i'm going to be using now um, my texture is, you know, not running into my text, uh, or my objects and all by a 16th of an inch. You can see that clear space around everything here, uh, keeping my ball nose bit away from, you know, uh, the objects and all, uh, but, um, by a 16th of an inch, if I was using a 60 degree V bit, that number would have to be a little bit wider. Uh, and everything, but uh, 16th of an inch gives me a nice clearance and all. But that is, as far as if you're referring to text slant, Kurt, that's um, that's that. And as far as when I created the text, what angle did I use? There is no angle in text. Uh, the font, let's go back to here and everything. Uh, this is the font. So uh, the font is called American Scribe. Uh, you can download it off of dafont, D-A-F-O-N-T dot com. And uh, it is uh, naturally an italic type font. It's the same font that, similar font to like the Declaration of Independence uh, script uh, and everything. But um, uh, the... Spell that right, but the font itself it would help if I um, the font itself has a natural slant to it, a natural italic. It's just the font, so there is no slant or anything to it. That's just the natural from the font. Oh, texture, texture. Okay, sorry. Uh, there was a little icon on my screen. <laughs> There was a little icon on my screen covering the U-R-E, Kurt. Sorry about that. Let's go back and look at the texture toolpath. We have start depth of a 16th of an inch, maximum cut depth of a 16th of an inch with a minimum of a 32nd, roughly around there. Uh, maximum cut length, a half inch, minimum length, uh, 0.26. The overlap, 30 degrees. Step over a 32nd and the angle... 15 degree angle. Thank you. Sorry about that, Kurt. I was misunderstanding because on my screen, there's a little emoji that's covering 
it covered part of your word. So all I saw was text, text. And then the offset is a 16th of an inch. So that is the settings for this. Sorry, texture, texture. All right. All righty, all righty. Okay, so that is going to be, I'm not going to do, uh, but yes, you know, an option for this could have been lowering the bell down and curving the text over the bell, right? Uh, I think I'm going to keep it where it is, but that would be another option, right? That would be another option. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to keep it as it is here, but that could be another option. All right, good idea. Who, there was two guys that brought that up. That was um, with a text on a curve. Brooks Martin, Roger, I believe, and John. So all of you were talking about that. That would be another option as well too. All right, so that's that. Let's move over to now. I need to uh, really quickly take the eagle I want to kind of keep the Eagles symmetrical uh, more than anything else. The Eagles are kind of key. So I want to group the Eagle, or not group, I'll just uh, mirror that or copy that to the other sheet to the right side. And double click on this sheet to make it active. Uh, we can get rid of that. Delete. G for group. Uh, and I'm going to mirror that to the other side. Flip it horizontally. There we go. So that way the eagle will be in the same position as this eagle on the opposite side. All right. Now, here, um, the vector looks rough, but... It comes out actually very well for uh, the uh, Mount Rushmore graphic here. And um, the I'm going to have them kind of come right up. The Eagle's already got his boundary. These guys are going to need their boundary. So... Let me put their offset in. I'm just going to, as a whole right here, I'm just going to select it just like that and do an offset outward, that 32nd of an inch. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to turn off that outside vector and I'm going to hit delete on all the rest of the stuff. Delete. And here... I'm going to, uh, I'll probably end up rounding this off like we did Lady Liberty and everything. So that way we don't have a texture going into his forehead here and everything on that offset. But let me take a look. We'll, we'll do a preview, a simple preview, just to see uh, what that is, what it looks like uh, and everything uh, when it's carved. Now, um, let me see here. Okay. Now, Mount Rushmore um, was completed in 1941. Uh, and um, construction started in 1927. It was completed in 1941. So... I might put those dates here, 1927 to 1941. Um, unless there's something else creative that, uh, unless there's something else creative that we can do. Now, let me see here. Uh, QQQ, is the sheet the same height as the other side, you had to make it match the font. Hold on a second. 
Let me reread that again. And I wish that heart, I wish that vector would move out of my way. Um, is this sheet the same height as the other side you had to make to match the front? Ah, good question. So let's go ahead and take this and hit delete on that. I know exactly where John is leading to. And we're going to come back over to the left side and take these two vectors that we had to resize. And we're going to copy them over to that right side. Good call. Thank you, John. All right, let's get back over to that right side now. Okay. All right, let's bring the uh, boys of Mount Rushmore down just a little bit. So I'm thinking about putting the dates in here, um, 1927 to 1941. Um, I don't, uh, I don't, I mean, that would be about the only thing that I could think of to go in here as a historical date and everything. Thank you very much. That's what, <laughs> John, John's on it, man. John, you're great. That's perfect. Hold on a second. Our forefathers. Thank you. <laughs> good eye, John. All right. All right. Let's see here. Uh, good call, John. I like that a lot. So. I was pulling my brain on that one, and uh, John, you saved me on that. Fathers of Freedom, our forefathers. Uh, absolutely. So, our forefathers. Okay, now let's. I'm actually going to make that quite big and put it right. Uh, let's come down just a little bit. And let's weld that together. I'm keeping the font consistent using that scribe. And again, I want to see if I need to do my trim on this outside island vector. If I need to bring that down, let's take a quick let's take a quick peek at what we've got so far. Uh, so I'm just going to do a sample V carve. Nothing changes in my settings. They're all gonna remain the same. So we're gonna calculate this toolpath. Uh, I need to fix the overlapping vectors. We'll do that in just a second as well. And don't forget, I gotta remind myself that I do have to put my alignment pins and everything on that other side, the left side. Um, let's preview this just to see where we're at and everything. And of course, I'm going to turn the color off. You know, uh, it's going to have highlights in it and everything, but the texture area will not get painted or colored and all. There is going to be texture in there. Now, uh, Abe's face, you know, doesn't look quite right until you add the tone and color in. Uh, and this is the shadow as it comes around, you know, because Abe is on, on the, um, uh, the Black Hills... Uh, is it the Black Hill Mountains, I, I believe? But um, the uh, Abe is kind of right off to the side, and there's a cavity uh, there that um, that is what we're seeing here in this shadow area and everything. So uh, it looks, when we're looking at this, uh, in a with no color and everything his face looks weird and all but it's not it that's the way it is and uh, 
Teddy does. Uh, when we're looking at it like that, it almost looks like he's got sunglasses, but he doesn't. Um, when we come in here, uh, that's his uh, eyes. Let me see if uh, stand by one second. Let me see if I can. Uh, Let me see, let me see. Um, the only, yeah, the vector that I'm using is the only one with the, the best detail of, uh, It's the only one with the best detail for the tracing of the images that doesn't look too cartoonish. Um, and um, that looks, uh, that looks uh, for them. And the graphic, that particular graphic does not have, you know, uh, he doesn't have any eyes in that because uh, they're kind of, he has uh, he has glasses in the um, in that what you're seeing is the lens and the bridge of the nose and everything, so you don't see his eyes and everything. Um, and I'm just looking at all the graphics out there, and all the rest of them just look really cartoony. Uh, they don't look, this is unfortunately, uh, not unfortunately, but this is the kind of the best graphic there is to the, for their facial features and all. So, um, widen the side vector. I'm going to get rid of this vector right here and uh, on H face that's going into his forehead. Uh, his forehead it should not look like that. Uh, it should be whole uh, and everything. And that's what, uh, I think that's what John's telling me. But give me just a quick second. Let me see here. I will try. Uh, let me see. Let me come in here. Let me fix this vector really quickly. So on this vector, we're going to go into node editing. Uh, we're going to cut the vector here. I'm actually going to cut it all the way up here. I'm going to remove, hit delete to remove all of that. And then I'm going to have this vector join with a smooth curve. Uh, and I'm actually going to give that curve just a little bit more shape. All right, let's take another look at that. Let's try this again. Calculate. I got to clean up the vectors. We'll see what's crossing over. And let's see if that, that should clear up his forehead. To make him look a little bit more normalized. And, um, yeah, that's what his forehead should look like. OK. 
Okay. All right. Now, the only other possibility, I'd have to buy the image. Uh, I got a sample that I can look at, and if I like it, I can go in and buy the image. Uh, but I don't want to buy it uh, right this second if it's not... Um, if it's not going to look the way I want it to look. So let me... Bear with me just a moment. All right, so node editing. We will cut the vector. Cut the vector. Delete this. and join with a straight line. Uh, let's... All right, let me take this. I do not know if I'm gonna like this one, but let's throw it here. G for group. I think I like mine, but we'll see. All right, let's take a look at that. Calculate. Okay, I need an island. You see how everything here, it looks like a negative image? Uh, that's because it's missing that vector going around that island uh, and everything, so it's doing a negative carve. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna do an offset outward. We're going to hold down the shift key, turn off that offset, and then hit delete to get rid of everything else. And then we're gonna try that again, this time including that offset, and that's gonna create that, it's gonna reverse that image, that carving. And again, we've got, I've got some overlapped intersections and zero length spans to contend with. Uh, we'll clean that up. But um, by putting that offset in, it reverses that image 
that negative carved image and it has it carved the correct way and everything. And so the difference between this one and the other one is uh, it's got a little bit more detail in the rocks and all. Um, and uh, it's just a different angle. You're not seeing that gap between Abe and Johnson. Um, is that Thompson or Johnson? But uh, come back here. Let me turn off the color. And so, you know, more a little bit more detail. There's some areas that have to be cleaned up, but that image, uh, let me see here. That is from uh, Big Stock. And the... Um, Fifty three cents uh, for the EPS files and everything. Um, which isn't bad. Fifty three cents uh, is good, but the subscription is uh, seventy nine dollars and all so uh, I think I have a subscription then I'm not gonna try to log in and all that stuff but uh, I'd want to download the high resolution image this was a low thumbnail image uh, very low resolution thumbnail image so I'm not getting the quite the detail that I would want um, but it does have a good look to it it does have a good look to it as far as the detail and everything, uh, the mountains and all. Let me look at a real picture of Mount Rushmore real quick. Yeah, it's not bad. Um. Let me think here. There's a really good line image on uh, Adobe Stock, and that's eighty dollars for that image. Okay. Yeah, so the high resolution, yeah, I'm gonna just uh, stick with mine for now, but that is an option. It's a good looking image, nothing wrong with it. Um, uh, the, what do you say? Uh, where at John, I don't like the two round dots on George's right eye. Uh, that is the glint in the eye and uh, the white of the eye, but yeah. All right, so let's go back. Uh, I think I'm just going to use my original. That way I don't have to worry about any of that stuff for right now. Let me... Delete that out of there. Let's put this back. I'm okay with this. I know it's got the shadow. It's just a different angle. And um, I think I'm going to be content with this. I'm not going to be too picky on it. If I decide, I haven't carved it yet. Nothing's final till I carve it. Uh, if I decide that I want to go back and use a different image, then I will go in and uh, I'll purchase it. Um and all and get the high resolution SVG or EPS file, the vector file already that has all the details. 
Um, and with an account, I think I already have an account at Big Stock. Uh, I just got to log in, but it's 53 cents for the image. You know, um, the $79 a month is unlimited downloads on images and everything. So depending on how many graphics you use and you're in all, uh, it's an extended license. So you, you know, you have the uh, right to use them in your commercial uh, products and all. So, yeah. All right. Let's go back to this one here. Let's recalculate that. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to this time, I'm actually going to do the vector value. We got to move forward. We wasted a little bit too much time on old Mount Rushmore there. Uh, I got to move our forefathers up, but I want to go to the vector validator real quick and search all of this. And I'm going to have some zero link spans from the offsets. And that's what my problem is, is when I create the offset line, it creates these zero link spans. And for those of you that don't know, um, the, yeah, I'm going to, the black color is going to be removed, John, but uh, the zero link span is basically two nodes that are on top of each other and there's no line arc or curve busy curve between them it's just two nodes and so that's called a zero link span and vetric has a button here to fix those automatically you just press that button and fix them and everything so that that pop-up that warning that keeps popping up you know was the zero link spans and everything so let me get uh this uh our forefathers i really like our forefathers that's good uh, let's get that moved back up where it belongs. And um, I'm going to select while I'm here, I'm going to ungroup the uh, eagle. I'm going to select this boundary, this boundary, the all of the text. This boundary, the inside vector and none of the other inside vectors of the items. And we're going to uh, go into the texturing tool, same parameters, uh, making sure that offset is a 16th of an inch. And we're gonna calculate that. We're gonna reset that preview. I really, there is a lot of good detail in that, um, in that, uh, that other image, but uh, we'll, uh, let me close. Calculate. All right, so this takes care of side, the right side. I don't think I'm gonna put anything else in here. I don't think I need to try to fill every bit of space, but hey, you know, who knows? Um, at first, my whole thought, let me just, uh, let me reiterate what my thought was originally. Preview those toolpaths while that's previewing. What my thought was is, you ever seen those, um, all right, let's, uh, on a, on a non-related, think of like the Aztec calendars, you know, that people carve on the CNC and everywhere you look, there's always, there's something, there's a little tidbit of something, right? I don't care if it's the normal Aztec calendar or the, or the, the Star Wars one or the, Marvel's one, whatever, but every little thing, there's there's some details like, oh, there's cool, oh, there's Marvel, man, whatever, whatever, you know, right, uh, Iron Man, but um, there's something, and so what I thought, and let me get rid of the black color here, uh, what I had originally thought was, um, that I wanted to do was, I wanted this patriotic box that no matter what you look at, you know, even in the finest detail, because I can go get micro bits if I really want to go get, you know, small detail and all, but what, uh, what I looked at is everywhere you look, you saw something, there was something cool to see, right? That was my original thought, but there's also something to be said about not overdoing it, right? Uh, and, and everything. And, um, uh, Again, this is gonna have some toner uh, and all that's really gonna bring out, let me see if I can uh, bear with me just a second. Let me see if I can show you kind of what, V-carve. 
calculate um, ba -dum -bum -bum. preview all right if I use a selected toolpath color if I give the toolpath some color you're not gonna see really anything uh, pop up at the moment here but uh, because that material has already been carved away but if I take my depth here my flat depth and I give it just a little bit more I'll make this number 0 0.625 0626 so it's going to carve just slightly deeper and everything uh, when I preview that visible toolpath uh, because I've assigned that toolpath a color and everything that color will show up right uh, so I can leave the others just to kind of give you the visual of what that will look like when I add the uh, when I put in the uh, glazing and everything to kind of accent the shadow areas and stuff uh, and of course I can change that color to whatever it would like but I'm just kind of giving you an idea so um, it won't look so odd uh, when it has the glazing in and the glazing are really accenting all the shadow areas and all that stuff. Uh, the the cars will look you know, a little bit more normal and everything. Um, you know. All right. The uh, that will be that side. So now. Um, let me do this really quickly because both sides are going to be the same. Let me put in the 0.25 uh, one there, one there. This is going to be a drilling operation. I'm going to be going... Uh, Three eighths of an inch deep uh, with a quarter inch end mill. I'll use pecking, and this is going to be my uh, right board, right side alignment holes. Calculate. I'm going to take those vectors and I'm going to copy them to the left side sheet. Because uh, they're going to be over there as well, too. I'm going to take these vectors. Copy them to the other side. Take this vector here. Copy it to the other side. Let's flip this over. These holes will get carved into the waste board. So they're going to go a quarter inch deep into the waste board, uh, my sacrificial board that I'll be carving these on. And this is my right side waste board holes. And since the holes, it should, it, technically it's gonna be the right and the left um, because they're the same size piece, same hole placement and everything. I can just use the pin holes that I mill in my the, the sacrificial board for both boards the left and the right and everything because uh, they're going to be carved at separate times uh, I'll, I'll do the front the back the left the right and everything um, all at once so I don't I don't necessarily need to uh, put in the word right side here I could just put in waste board holes but that's okay waste board alignment all right, so let's get uh, woken up. Sorry, y'all still with me? We're gonna wrap this up here in just a few minutes. Uh, so with that, we're gonna now take this project board. We're going to hold down the shift key, this vector, I mean. We're gonna scale it right to the edge, to our perimeter there. 
I missed the whole perimeter. Let's try that one more time. Zoom, 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 zoom. Hold down that shift key. That'll keep it centered. Snap to that point. There we go. And then I'm going to draw a line. And this time from learning from my option over here, I'm going to draw this line from the bottom to the top. Space bar. I'm going to draw this line from the top to the bottom. Space bar. I'm going to select this line first, hold down the shift key, select this line last. I'm going to go to my chamfer toolpath, rinse and repeat. Uh, starting at uh, zero with the 90 degree V bit, I'm cutting a half inch wide, half inch deep. It automatically sets based on that 45 degree angle. And um, my lines are facing the correct portion. And for those of you that might be joining me late, the arrowheads point to the deepest part of the cut. So from that part, I'm cutting down, down from the inside of the board. I'm cutting down to the outside of the board, cutting that 45 degree miter. Uh, we're gonna calculate that. And then the vector is gonna be a profile cut, cutting all the way through the material on the outside of the line. I'm gonna have two-sided tape holding this part down. Uh, so I don't have to deal with clamps and all that stuff. And uh, preview that visible piece. Okay. Now, these holes will not be on this side. They're just, they're there. They're going to be in the wasteboard. So uh, just know that. All right. So this will be my right side part here. My right side part. All right. Now, let's go back to the 2D view real quick. Let's pop back over to the left side board very, very quickly. And on the left side project board, we're going to take this and this. We're going to add in our alignment hole toolpath. Or, uh, yeah, toolpath. And this is my left side board alignment holes. Not waste board, but my board alignment holes. This will be um, carved three-eighths of an inch deep. The reason why I go three-eighths and a quarter is my alignment pins. I use uh, metal quarter-inch dowel pins. Uh, they're steel or metal, um, and they're a half inch long. Uh, I've got them, you know, they're quarter inch diameter, they're half inch long. And so by going three eighths of an inch into my project board and a quarter inch into my waste board, uh, that leaves me that um, uh, eighth of an inch of, uh, you know, when I push that board down onto those pins, I'm not bottoming out. Right, so that's why the purpose, that's where the number three eighths comes from. That gets carved into the board. I don't wanna carve that deep into my waste board, right? So I carve that deep into my project board. In my waste board, I only carve a quarter inch deep. And now my waste board is a jig more so than a waste board. So uh, these boards will actually be mounted onto a, a separate sacrificial board that, uh, uh, that I can drill these alignment holes in and, and I'm not beating up my, I don't, my, my waste board doesn't look like a piece of, you know, uh, uh, what's the cheese that has all the holes in it? Um, yeah. Anyway, doesn't look like a piece of that. What is that cheese that has all the holes? Somebody throw that in the text message or the uh, chat cause it's going to drive me nuts now. All right, so that's going to be my alignment holes. That'll be the first toolpath I run there. And um, a quarter inch end mill because of my quarter inch pin. And um, why can't I think of the... Those holes are going to be copied to the other side. Let's flip that over. What is the... Swiss. Thank you, sir. Swiss, Swiss, Swiss. There we go. There's those comments. Swiss cheese. So my waste board doesn't look like Swiss cheese, right? I don't want a bunch of holes everywhere and stuff like that. Uh, so a sacrificial board gets uh, clamped down 
and then these project boards are going to get double-sided taped to that project board you know uh, for the carvings and everything and my alignment holes are going to get carved in it and all that stuff and it's just scrap piece of wood it's not my actual waste board which is my waste board has t-slots milled into it it has grid lines it has all kinds of things uh, and um, it's more of a jig than a waste board, right? And I don't want to be beating up my jig, my waste board. Uh, so uh, anyhow, over here, this is going to be carving uh, a drilling tool path. It's going to be in the waste board a quarter of an inch. Um, and this is going to be my board holes. And like I said, these holes are the same exact position as these holes for the left and the right side. Uh, so the um, I can use the same holes that I mill for one for the other and everything as far as on the wasteboard pins, where the pins go. All right, so that'll be that. And um, all right, so now that takes care of, That takes care of my left and right side, the um, the front is taken care of, my legs are taken care of. That just leaves the lid in the back as far as tool pass. Now the back, uh, we are going to end this uh, class here in just a few minutes, but I wanna end this with a look at what we're going to, um, I want to end this with a look at what we are, we might do a real quick amount of uh, creating some vectors for some models. This is called a bunting flag or a bunted flag, bunting, bunting. And um, uh, you usually see this uh, around uh, during, you know, the holidays and everything, you'll see it around porches and, and, and roof lines. And uh, you'll see it on podiums, uh, you know, with politicians speaking and things. You'll see it, uh, you know, in different areas of this bunting flag. And um, you have your uh, blue uh, with your white in the center and then your red. Uh, and um, but this graphic, if you will, is meant to emulate this cloth that has these folds and everything in it, uh, you know, this bunt flag. And bunting is basically just a thinner material. It's a thinner material than uh, a flag material uh, that is used for these types of, you know, draping type, you know, banner style decorations and things like that. Um, but it has these folds in it. Now, what I'm thinking is uh, if I trace this as a vector and I do it as a vector and I want to have three of these or maybe two on one side, two on the other, uh, or it could be three across or something like that. But what I'm thinking is if I do it as a graphic, it doesn't translate very well when, when V carving it and things like that. If I trace the vectors and all it really doesn't look good when it's actually carved. It doesn't look, it doesn't have that appeal in everything. And what I'm thinking of doing is I'd like, I'm thinking of taking, uh, this is a vector. And by the way, this is a free vector online. If you're ever looking for the White House vector. Um, and uh, it is from... Give me just a minute, I'll tell you where it's from. It is a free vector, free download, absolute free download. Uh, go to the history. White House. Seek, S-E-E-K, logo.com. Seek, S-E-E-K, logo.com. And uh, it's a free download. Anyhow, this is a really... Uh, nicely detailed vector it comes as a vector SVG um, of the White House uh, there's there was a few little open vectors little lines right here by the bushes that I had to go in and delete there was three of them and everything and some of the bushes uh, were overlapping 
uh, the other line, so there's some overlap. So all I did was I sized these three bushes down, uh, just selected them and literally sized them down. You can see there's still some overlap right here and, and everything, but I just sized them down uh, so they weren't overlapping and all. To clean, that was kind of my cleanup. There's still a little bit of right there. I can fix that in just a moment. But um, I was thinking that on the very back, let me center this back on the board here. I was thinking on the back here that I was going to uh, put the uh, White House. And um, I've got to size it properly. It's not sized correctly right now. But uh, I was thinking about putting the bunting here and here at the top. And I was actually thinking about on the left and right side here, kind of like a colonial style cannon. You know, so the, I was thinking about, uh, let me size this down. Let me get, let me, let me get my vectors let me get my vectors cleaned up here for a moment. Uh, this should be 2.40. That's the vector we want. Um, my other vector, this one. Should be this one. Right there. And so the, this vector can go away. It doesn't belong. Uh, my White House already has the offset. I put that in earlier, the offset around it. So let me just size that down. My box isn't very big, right? Height. So this is all small stuff. It's not really height. And it absolutely would require, will require a 22 degree V-bit to try to get any kind of depth and definition, you know, and everything with that. And let me make sure that this is centered. There we go. Uh, let's make sure that these two vectors are centered left to right there. All right, let's take this cannon here and let's throw that here. And I know the scale is going to be off as far as the cannons bigger than the house kind of deal and all that stuff. I know. You don't have to tell me. I know already. But it's perspective. The house is far off in the distance. The cannons are closer uh, and everything. So they're going to appear larger. Okay. Um, I want to mirror this to the other side. Okay, and I was thinking about, imagine if I have the model, I was thinking about we, us creating the model and uh, these model, let me just kind of simulate this real quick. We'd have two there. Mirror those to the other side. Um, ba -da -ba -bum. They would be right on the edge like that. These would be right. The models themselves would be right on the edge. They'd be raised like that. And so, um, and the White House can come down just a little bit. Okay, now. These would be the models here and everything. They would be models uh, and or because the vectors don't look good. They just don't. They don't, they don't, they don't. Um, at all. And uh, uh, so modeling these would be a fun little project to do. Uh, and, and I'm not trying to get real fancy with the models and everything. I'm just, you know, it would be, we'd have to draw the vectors. Uh, it would be these triangular shapes and everything. Uh, one would have one height. It would be wedged up. You know, they would these would have these wedges in them. So they kind of give that little bit of raise, you know, on the back end here. 
Uh, these would be lowered down and everything, so it just looks like it has that ruffle to it and all. Uh, can you use a 15 degree for better detail? Sure, I could. Um, uh, sure, I could use a 15 degree V-bit. Uh, 15 degree side angle uh, right now uh, I'm using an 11 degree side angle so 15 degree would be less detail so uh, Jim uh, 15 degree would be less detail now if we're doing a true full angle 15 which is seven and a half side angle right then that would be more detail right you're gonna you'll be able to get finer yes so if it's a true included angle 15 degrees seven and a half degree side angle yeah for sure you could yep but if it's a uh, 15 degree side angle, 30 degree included angle, um, no, stick with the 22. But yes, for sure, seven degree half angle, you could probably get better detail and everything in there. Um, you know, so let's take a look without the bunting flags. But I was thinking, you know, that you know that bunting uh, flag. I don't know if that's uh, if that looks good or not. Um, you know, remember there'd be texture all around and everything, but uh, kind of um, thinking that that would be, you know, I'm thinking that would look good. Or no bunting uh, there, and we would have some kind of text to, you know, round this off, uh, you know, something something um and i had that this is where i left myself uh this morning kind of thinking you know i thought i'll discuss this later uh and everything but um you know if we did it as a model right one nation under god in god we trust um right exactly yep john's on it man um, the, uh, and also let's take a look without the bunting. Let's take a look at where we're at. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I'll select all of that. I'm not going to select the two flags. Or the flags. Oh, you son of a gun. Undo. Don't accidentally move things. Turn those off. Uh, let's do a V carve toolpath. Uh, this is just for preview purposes only. Uh, let's go back to our 0 0.625. Uh, calculate that. Got some vectors to clean up inside the White House for sure. There's a few overlaps. I already showed you that one bush overlap, right? The bush that's overlapping. And um, ladies and gentlemen, just for one quick second, you're going to hear me. Uh, you're going to hear me talking. Uh, it's not to the class for just a quick second. Otherwise, this individual will be ringing my doorbell. Um, I am in the middle of a class. I will get with you as soon as I can, uh, but you can download those files from our website under support and downloads under the owner's menu. Okay. All right. Let's go look at this. Let's preview the visible toolpath. Now, again, we'll add the texture in there just to give it that full effect. Uh, and then I'll decide if I want to add the bunting or, if, uh, you know, the text. And a seven and a half for, uh, who asked that question? Uh, Jim. A 15 degree, seven and a half side angle would give me more depth and definition in these windows and doors uh, and everything um, for sure. Uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do for right now while I'm using the 22 to get a little bit more depth out of that. But uh, for sure. All right, anyway, let's throw some texture in there as well. 
hold down the shift key, select this, the outside vectors of the objects, texturing toolpath, everything is the same. Our offset is gonna be 0625, calculate. Preview the visible toolpath to throw that in there. Okay, now to get a little bit more depth and definition while using a 22 degree V-bit versus using a, a smaller angle, uh, I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna select the White House vectors, just the vectors of the White House, not the offset, not the offset. Uh, we're going to recreate a new V-carve toolpath. This time I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna start uh, with a little bit more depth, right? But I'm actually gonna start at a um, uh, 16th of an inch and no flat depth on it. I'm gonna calculate that. I don't need any of the, uh, the um, end mills will not fit anywhere in there. I uh, got some overlaps, like I said, in the bushes, I got some overlaps and everything to contend with. That's what that alarm is that's popping up. But what this is gonna do is, um, it's going to give me a little bit more depth and detail. Now that's actually too much depth and detail we don't want that. Let's go back and fix that because I'm a goofball. Uh, this is actually going to be a 30 second. I'll just go 0.03. I want to cut that in half. All right, back in the preview, I'm going to undo last. There's a button there that undo last to undo that last thing I did. And then I'm going to preview that toolpath again. Um, and uh, there we go. And so that's going to give me some more depth and definition in that. And again, if I were, um, if I were uh, using a narrower angle V-bit, I would not have to put a start depth in there. All right, let's, uh, let me take the bunting flag. I'm going to revisit that. Um, and we might do a modeling class next week where we do that bunting. But for right now, I think I'm gonna use One Nation Under God. Uh, let's go in here. Um. I'm thinking I want to go one nation and then under God. So this is a height of 0 0.608. We'll just do that. And then point six oh eight. All right, now on the two separations here, I want the uh, text to be, you know, kind of somewhat centered with each other um, and everything. Uh, so I'm going to select, this is the text that I want to move right here. This is the text I want to align to. And uh, I'm gonna just kind of uh, align up and down no, that's a lie. I'm going to align um, uh, to where all of the tops are the same height. Uh, so the top of this is the top of that. Here, I can't, Here, you know what? I can do one better. I can do one better. Let's take a guideline and snap it to the bottom there. OK, 
Okay, ignoring this vector right here. That's not the vector that I'm using. All right, so let's bring this in a little bit. I'll center everything as soon as I get kind of the spacing I want. All right, if I select this and this and I align left to right, that will center that. All right, let's take a look at what this would look like with that added in. I'll fix the vectors in just a minute. That'll be our last little hoorah. And then we're going to wrap up in this last nine minutes. Got a lot done. And then you all are going to see, uh, we'll end up carving this piece. Uh, I want to make, I, do, I definitely want to carve this piece. Now I'm going to reset this preview back to a blank board and I got to go back in to the uh, texture. Let me see what this is. Um, we're going to go back into the texture toolpath and I want to um, include in the texture the text, this text up here. So I'm going to hold down the shift key. and include that in and recalculate that. All right, let's reset this. Uh, let's preview this, 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 and that. Preview the visible tool path. I don't know if the cannons, you know, uh, I thought about it instead of the cannons, I thought about it being the two eagles again, you know, uh, but I thought the cannons, you know, kind of, uh, I wanted to bring a little bit of the colonial, you know, times into it and everything. Um, but, uh, I, um, The cannons I thought would be a nice touch, or it would have been the two eagles facing each other, uh, you know, uh, here as well as the as same eagles that were on the sides, these two guys, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, because I already have an eagle on the front, I have an eagle on the sides, and um, I thought, you know, do I need the eagles on the back? If so, they would be sitting where these cannons are facing inward. And I will, um, you're right, I did. Uh, thank you very much. John pointed out, or Troy pointed out to me that I had me, uh, had me, I had the text uh, under God selected when I raised the text up, uh, and um, I moved it up when I moved up the One Nation and everything uh, accidentally. So I need to recalculate that 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 and that recalculate the visible tool pass to correct that so recalculating the texture and that v carve uh, with the under god in the proper position but uh uh, if you'd like to see what it looks like with the two eagles instead of the two cannons, it won't take but a second. I can pop them down there and we can take a look at that as well. And then you can be the judge of that. Let's reset this really quickly. Let's preview these tool paths one last time with that correction. 
Thanks for pointing that out, Troy. I would not have picked up on that right away. Uh, I'd have been like, what? That looks crooked. But, um, much better. All right, let's really quickly, uh, for those of you that are visual individuals, uh, let's take, I only need one. Uh, let's take this guy. and copy him to the back sheet. On the back sheet, let's select him. And remember, I gotta weld my text too still to, to ungroup that, but uh, um, he is right on top of that. Let me undo that really quickly. Uh, I got to group that cannon together so that I can deselect the cannon from the eagle. So let's go in and undo Let's select this cannon for a moment group it together G for group. I don't want to move it right now uh, G for group and then let's go back one more time. Copy to the back. Now uh, I can come in here and I can select this. I can hold down the shift key, turn off the cannon, and I can group G for group to group that eagle together. Uh, and I can size him down. Throw him right about here and size him just under one nation. Uh, let me come over here on this side. Let me group this cannon. G for group. I can take this eagle and mirror him. Create a mirror copy on the other side. And just for visual purposes, I can create a V-carve toolpath. Turning off the cannons. Uh, one nation of God, that's all good. Uh, calculate. Yeah, you know, the Minuteman, um, uh, I, I actually, that was one of the vectors I thought about grabbing. Um, and, uh, and, and, and utilizing and everything. And I didn't, um, but that would be a good vector to add to this somewhere. Let me throw the texture in just to give the full effect. So we'll do another texturing toolpath, uh, 0625. This one will have um, the One Nation under God, the outside boundary of the White House, the outside boundary of the Eagle. Um, let me... Uh, Outside vector of the eagle, outside vector of the White House, one nation. I still got to weld that text together. Okay, 
calculate. Preview the visible toolpath. This is just putting that texture in so you can see the effect. So this would be the look with the eagles. Okay. So that is the look with the eagles. Nothing wrong with that at all. But now let's reset the preview and let's look at the... Preview the visible tool pass. This is the look with that. But we could also, uh, you know, have the Minutemen guarding the Minutemen uh, guarding the White House, right? And all. Uh, and so that's the cannons, uh, the White House with the cannons, right? So I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm thinking it needs something different. I don't know. But that's where I'm at. That's what we'll have to, you know, we'll have to play on. Uh, John likes the Eagles. I think the Eagles, since there's an Eagle on the front, the Eagles on the side, I think the Eagles kind of make sense. But I also, I thought, well, you know, cannons would be pretty cool, you know, like colonial cannons and stuff. So I, I grabbed that, you know, that was a last minute thought. It was going to be eagles to begin with. And uh, I don't know, right? I don't know. But, all right, really quickly, this will be the last thing here. Let me see here. Let me search for something really quickly. Um, let me find an appropriate vector. Bear with me one second. Uh, one with the appropriate amount of detail to kind of match everything else. Um... This might, this might do, let me see here. All right, open image in a new tab. Save image. All right, let's try one more little trace uh, here and see what we think. Oh, let's um, let's take the cannons. This is what I love about layers. Let's move them to a new layer. We'll call it cannons. C A N. Is cannon two ends? Cannons. Yeah. And then we'll turn the visibility off for now. The eagles. Need that guideline there. Move them to a new layer. Layer is just a way to separate uh, parts of the design. Let's turn those off. Let's go into very quickly open up and let's import a graphic in. Uh, let's go to the trace tool, trace bitmap. Uh, turn the fading off. <clears throat> Step number one. I'm going to crank this up to 75. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's go 71. Three. Preview. Apply. Close. Delete. Um, dum, dum, dum. 
just for right now, just for kicks and giggles. Let's mirror that to the other side. I'd probably move one nation in a little bit under God in and make this bigger so it's taller. He's taller. Uh, but uh, let's just take a look just for kicks and giggles. All right. Um, we've got to create the outside boundary, that outside offset. Uh, otherwise, it will not work out. It'll be a negative image. Hold down the shift key, turn off that offset and hit delete on the other offset items. Same thing here, select this, click on the offset, hold down the shift key, turn off that outside boundary, hit delete, get rid of everything else. We only want that boundary, that's the whole goal of this. Um, let's take Go into node editing for just a quick moment. It's not going to match right now, but that's okay. I just want to quickly do this. Um, so, new toolpath, uh, texture, select the outside boundary, the one nation, the outside of here, under God, the outside of here, 0625, rinse and repeat, calculate. Uh, for the V carve. Select it all. Calculate. The overlaps are in the White House. Like I said, those bushes and stuff. One Eagle, one Minute Man. That's a good idea. One Eagle, one Minute Man. Yep, could be enough room for smaller cannons and the Eagles. Could get them all in there, right? Let's take a look here. So we've got our texture and the carvings. Let's preview all visible tool paths. So yeah, so we could do, we could probably do, oh, <laughs> hold on a second. <laughs> Let me stop that. Uh, it would help when we do the texture that we have the outside boundary selected. Very important, calculate that. All right, let's try that again. Let's reset that preview. Let's look at that one more time. And uh, also want that preview. Stand by one second. Yeah, so that that, 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 and that. Preview visible tool pass. So yeah, so that's a good idea. We could have, uh, we might be able to have, we could have the uh, Minutemen, we could have the cannons, you know, a little further back so they would be a little bit smaller, right? Um, I'd probably find a, 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 a little bit different graphic, maybe, possibly. Uh, or change this uh, to where, you know, uh, change the way it's standing and all. But we could do the cannons a little smaller in here. That could be a thing. That could be a thing, huh? Not bad. Uh, I would change the platform. I would probably remove this platform right here and have his feet just, you know, standing on the ground. Yeah. Let's throw a, uh, let's quickly, uh, let's here, here, hold on. This is it. This is it. We're, we're 10 minutes over. Let's throw the cannons in. Uh, let's take 
on the cannons, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I want to leave them right. I don't want to change them where they were and all. I want these three options, but let's copy this to another layer. Copy, not move. Copy to a new layer. Uh, small cannon. Okay. And then the reason why we do that is I can turn off the big cannon. And on the small cannon, now I can come in and I can uh, move this. Size it down. Got to think about perspective. A little bit further in the distance. Uh, let's mirror that on. Let's mirror that really quickly. I, uh, we could do one cannon, one eagle. We could do the two cannons. Uh, there's a lot of options there. Uh, but let's take a look at, let's go back into this tool path. Uh, let's ungroup this cannon. Ungroup here, ungroup there. Uh, so let's go back into this tool path right here. Hold down the uh, shift key and add this in to the mix, add this in to the mix and calculate. Again, that warning is number one, my text has not been welded yet. Uh, so it's got overlapping lines and I do have overlaps in the, I do have overlaps in the White House vectors in the bushes. All right, let's go back to the texture now. First of all, let's turn off these vectors. We'll come preview them in a minute. Let's go back into the texture now and open that back up. And in the 2D view, the vectors are all selected for that. We just got to add in the, hold down the shift key and add in the outside vector for the cannon. And the cannon. Calculate that again. All right, now let's uh, turn that on, that, 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 and the V-Carve 7 that I keep checking over here, that's that little extra detail in the White House. Uh, so that's what that is. So let's go back in and preview those visible tool paths. And this is the Minutemen with the uh, cannons. Now again, uh, yes, uh, but the platform uh, I would you know I would go in and I would take the time to redraw the boots here off of this platform, right? This you know I just grabbed a quick vector, and there are other vectors of the Minutemen that would that might be better suited, uh, that look you know better or more you know more apt to it. Uh, but I would get rid of this bottom platform, uh, so it wouldn't be in there and it wouldn't look so odd. But all in all, not bad, right? What do y'all think? Yeah. And, um, yeah, don't need the eagles in there. Or anything like that uh, yeah so again this would be uh, this vector here would be copied to the other side it would be flipped the vector would be I don't have the alignment holes or any of that stuff but the vector would be uh, brought up to the edges Hold down, uh, let me undo that. When you do that, hold that shift key down so it does them both at the same time. 
We're going to draw a line, and uh, I'll draw a line from the bottom to the top on this left side. Spacebar from the top to the bottom on the right side. Spacebar. Uh, go into the chamfer tool path. It's all rinse and repeat once you're kind of... Um, Once you're kind of uh, in the groove of things, uh, calculate. And then the vector itself, the boundary is going to be the profile cut, cutting the part out. Um, on the outside of the line, preview those visible tool paths. And again, there'd be alignment holes and all that stuff. Got to add that in. And that would be the back side of that box. I think with a little bit of cleanup on the Miniman, uh, the feet, this platform and everything, get it more suited to where it, you know, kind of really looks like it's supposed to be there. Um, and all, yeah. Yep. I'll bring the wheels down on the cannons. I'll bring them down to where they're sitting right on the edge here a little bit. Uh, not too far, just bring them a little bit closer. And again, that platform will be gone. So we'll have that kind of uh, down here, you know, like the wheels are sitting on the base. But uh, yeah, so there's our backside. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, we're going to go ahead and hit save on this project for now. And it's uh, we're going to wrap up here. So what we have, um, let's really quick summarize our lesson. Um, number one, when because the sides and everything are the the height of our parts front back and sides are the same uh a few of the vectors could be used for to outline our areas and everything um so why draw what you can copy you get one right copy it over to the other side and that thing like that um the offsets when we're doing a raised and we have our border selected and we're raising the stuff in between we create an additional offset around these graphics so that they're carving like in a little island. So they're raised. If we don't create that offset, it creates a negative carving and it creates an opposite look of what it's supposed to look like. So the offsets and everything. Um, the, uh, you know, um, using lines to align text or objects and all. Uh, a lot of times when I need perfect spacing and uh, it's between two objects versus like the center of my board or the, you know, the top, the left, the right, whatever. If there's two areas that I need to be in between, I'll always draw a line as a shape and I'll use that line to center to because it has a natural center point on the whatever length line I draw. So um, remember that little tip and everything. Um, the uh, texturing... Uh, toolpath, your chamfer toolpath, we had to reverse one line versus the other as far as the start points so that the carve happens on the correct side of the line. Uh, so uh, with our start point at the bottom of the left side, uh, it allows the chamfer to carve correctly. And with our start point at the top side, it allows our chamfer to carve correctly. Otherwise, if the start point was at the same, then one set of uh, one chamfer would carve backwards. It would carve in the wrong direction from the outside in. Um, the uh, uh, the um, our feet. Uh, not everything has to. Uh, the one. This is the one key thing. Not everything has to be done at the CNC machine. Uh, our feet, uh, when they get carved and, and, you know, that little frame gets glued together, then I'll take it over to the router table or I'll use my chamfer block uh, to, uh, you know, uh, plane a nice little chamfer or I'll round it over with a small little eighth inch rounder just to give it a nice little transition. Uh, the lid, uh, when I the, we didn't do the lid tool pass, we'll do that in our next project. Uh, this isn't over yet. Um, we'll move on to other things after this, but we'll kind of 
tidy up the box next week. But uh, our lid, the hinge cutouts, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to make it a two-sided project and do the hinge pockets or any of that stuff. Uh, I like to be able to still, even though I have a CNC machine, I still like to be able to use my other tools from time to time and uh, mortising out uh, with a chisel, um, you know, an area for the hinges and all. I like to keep my, you know, hand tool techniques, you know, sharp as far as my, you, you don't use it, you lose it kind of deal. So uh, I'll cut out the hinges. It's a very simple little mortise cut, hinge cut for the hinges. Uh, and... Um, and everything and then from there so uh, we'll be using two-sided tape I'll be I need to put my alignment holes uh, for the front side here uh, and the back side and since the front and the back side are the same size boards and all when I lay out the holes and create the tool path for the waste board it'll be the same holes that I use for the front and the back because they're gonna be in the same place so when I lay out the holes on the front for the project board holes and the waste board holes, those will get copied over to the back and it'll be the same holes, right? So I have a bunch of, again, I'll have you know everything look like Swiss cheese and stuff. Well, that's going to wrap it up. Hopefully you take something away from this. Uh, and um, uh, let me see what you said here. Uh, why do you have to flip the vectors before you do the chamfer? Uh, Kurt, so let's really quickly, let's go back up here where it's a little bit bigger and you can see it uh, on the side two. So uh, let me move the profile vector out of the way just for a moment so you can see the two lines. We have a line here and a line here. Let's turn off the grid line so you can see both lines, this one and this one. These are the lines we're using for our chamfer. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, in node editing mode, I'm going to make this line uh, the start point up here at the top. And this one over here, I'm going to make the start point up. Like I drew the lines from the top to the bottom. Let's just assume that. If I'm going into the chamfer toolpath here, and on the chamfer toolpath, um, when I select a line, the arrows automatically, once a line is selected, the arrows will pop up on the screen showing me which way that chamfer is being cut. Now, if I'm doing an inside cut sloping upward, what that means is on the outside of my line, the inside here, it's sloping upwards, meaning that uh, from the inside of this line, which is this line right here, that's the inside going this way, the deepest part of the cut is going to be here, and I'm sloping upward. I'm sloping upward to the end of the line. The highest part of the cut is here, right? It's the wrong way. You know, my chamfer needs to be at the high point here, cutting down that 45-degree angle to the end of my board right here. This, is, this line is the end of my board. That's where the profile gets cut. If I'm sloping downward, now I'm on the outside of that line, high part, cutting downward, downward, uh, to the deep part. The arrowheads always point to the deep part. Well, in this case, I am doing an outside cut, but I'm sloping upward, meaning from my outside line here, I'm sloping upward. So from the outside line, this is the deepest part of the cut, 45 degree angles up to the inside of my piece, that angle cut. And because the node is at the top, if I were to select this line with the node at the top, my cut is on the opposite side of the line. It's, you know, it's, it matches on the opposite side. I need this cut to be on the other side of the line. I need it to flip. And rather than creating two separate tool paths, one going upward, one sloping downward, kind of deal, one being an inside cut, one being an outside cut, all I simply have to do is flip the line and put the start point at the bottom and that flips the direction of the cut. Now I'm making an outside cut sloping upward towards the inside. So the deepest part is here sloping upward, right? Uh, so just by flipping that start point, that's why you're flipping the line. Okay. Hopefully Kurt, that answers your question. All right. Uh, and, um, Will the tape stick to the carvings or, uh, you know, do you do the back first? No, the tape will stick to the carvings um, because 
uh, I'm only carving in the you know the 3D view. Let me flip back over to the other side. I'll fix that. But uh, in the preview here, on that two-sided tape, uh, all of this area, I'm just going to have a strip of tape here and a strip of tape here. Now, my tape is 1.41 inches thick wide. And this is only, this here is only, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, three inches tall. So uh, two strips of tape and it's going to come right across. So I'll have tape on this edge. I'll have tape on this edge and on the outside. And yes, it will stick on the high parts and everything there. So uh, it'll hold just fine. Yep. No problem whatsoever. Uh, for me to do that. I don't want, which I could, uh, I could do the back side first. I could just switch my uh, holes where the alignment holes get flipped. I could switch those tool paths. And I could do the chamfers first, but I can't do the chamfers first uh, because, um, I mean, I could do the chamfers first, sorry. But uh, when I do the chamfer it's going to cut, it's, it's cutting right down to the very bottom of that cut. And there's not a whole lot of material left over, right? So I prefer to do the carving first where it's a solid block of wood, then flip it over, then cut those chamfers. And now that's leaving me a little bit so that when my profile cut comes, you know, those little pieces get knocked off and stuff. But, uh, um, so I want to do my carving first. I'll think about Mount Rushmore if I want to change that vector and all. I'll think if I want to spend the, uh, I'll look and see if I have the account with them uh, and if I want to use that other graphic or not, but uh, we'll go from there. And, um, but yeah, in a nutshell, that's that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to have a wonderful night. It's 1030. We've gone along enough for tonight. Um, we'll, uh, we'll jump in, you know, this coming, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, uh, every other Tuesday. Uh, I might do it this coming Tuesday. We might have a class this coming Tuesday to really put the final touches on this and have all the tool pass created because I want to give these files to you. I'm going to give these files to everybody. I'm going to release the files for this project uh, to everyone. Uh, and um, uh, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, everyone that's uh, watching and stuff and all. So um, at first I was going to sell the files as a way to make a little bit of income, maybe like, you know, two or $3 a download, but I think I'm just going to make them available for a free download. I'm not sure. Uh, probably so, but, um, we'll, uh, make them available. And this model is my model that I, uh, if you guys want to buy it, it is for sale on the, uh, uh, build it TV website builttv.com forward slash shop. Uh, I think that might be the only thing that I don't give away, but everything else I will. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, it depends on, uh, let, let's get it done first and then we'll figure it out from there. I need to be generous, right? I want to be generous and all you wonderful uh, boys and girls and everything, but uh, I've also, in, in a small way, I got to make a living, right? Um, uh, and uh, my... Paid subscribers, you know, that, that pay, uh, you know, monthly to uh, do our Wednesday night classes and all that really helps me out. Um, so that, uh, you know, so think about that, consider that. But uh, uh, I'll see, I'll, I'll, I'll make, I haven't made a final decision on what I'm going to do with these files. I will make them available, uh, but um, some of them, the lid, at least the model might be a digital download that might be cost. But uh, all right, I'm rambling now. Y'all have a wonderful evening. I'll let you know next week what we're going to do uh, as far as the class, but we'll wrap this up, put all the little bells and whistles on it, and uh, hey, maybe if I can get the cameras and all set up uh, for another week, we'll carve this ac the ac actual project, um, uh, some of it, because we, we won't want to sit there and watch the CNC just carving 
all week because it's gonna it's not a short card so just to give you an idea just this right side right side vectors on my CNC um, just the right size about an hour and 26 minute of carving time right so keep that in mind we got four of those sides and the lids gonna be much longer we're talking a few quite a few hours so y'all have a wonderful evening uh, we'll talk next week I'll put out a post uh, for a link if there's gonna be a class uh, I'll make notifications to everybody enjoy your weekend thanks for joining me tonight we'll catch you soon